So let's go to yes, the first slide. I will maybe start with some information about Poland. Uh, Poland is, as you can see on the world map, in the center of Europe, in the heart of Europe, also very close to the heart of the world. Um, it is a very well established uh, member of European Union. So there is, uh, let's say, a free flow of uh, cash, free flow of uh, conducting business by all the um, countries that are in the European Union, so it includes also Finland. Um, yeah, and um, it is also very visible that how the business works in Poland as Riddle Partner has, uh, as Nora said, six offices uh, and uh, that there, and uh, I'm personally speaking from Wrocław, um, uh, Katarzyna and uh, Magdalena will uh, are are from Warsaw, so uh, yeah, there are, there are so, so, yeah, many more uh, offices uh, in Poland. We are here for 30 years, uh, so it's quite a long time. Long time. It's a very established uh, firm in Poland, uh, and there are 500 colleagues here in Poland, uh, so it's quite quite a lot. Uh, let's go to another slide. Uh, let's go to another slide, please. Um, yeah, and uh, you can see how our offices in Poland uh, look like. Um, let's go to another slide. Yeah, and what makes Poland a very attractive uh, country to start uh, investments here? Uh, it's a stable economy. Uh, with a very established macroeconomic framework. Um, it is very important uh, that we are very, let's say, crisis proof, uh, because any crisis that took uh, place in the last, uh, let's say, 20 years had no such strong impact as in other countries of European Union. So we can say also that our economy became strong. Uh, we also have very strategic location because we are right in the heart of the Europe. So there are many roads that uh, are connecting west and east, uh, also uh, south uh, of Europe. There is also still very big investment potential. Uh, we've got human resources, uh, which I will tell more uh, with, with showing you another slide. And what is very important, it's also innovative country with technological potential. So let's go to another slide. Yeah, and there are some mo more information uh, that uh, ju justify what I already said. So we are the sixth largest economy in the European Union. Um, what is very important, our domestic product has uh, been grown in quarter three of 2021 by seven and three percent so it's quite a good um, outcome especially taking into consideration that there were some problems with uh, supply chains and so we are uh, also the fifth largest EU, eu country by population so we have uh, more than 38 uh, million inhabitants and uh, more most of them are uh, at, the, at their working age uh, there are also many in universities in Poland, so we've got a lot of graduates, a lot of very well educated uh, people here. Um, yeah, and as, as you can see, if we can go back uh, to the slide, uh, Anne. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, most, uh, maybe not most, but the biggest part, 18% 18, 18 uh, are uh, interested in business and administration. So this is why man, many share, um, shared services offices have uh, started uh, to operate in Poland. There are many also medicine doctors, uh, quite a lot of social sciences and engineering. But it is very important that also in Poland we have very uh, strong IT sector and our um, government uh, is providing many incentives so we are the fifth economy in europe and and one of the 10 economies in the world that attracted the most investments in science technology engineering and mathematics uh, so this is very important information uh, also that poland is an in the ideal place for startups as it is first uh, in the ce region of, of the most attractive one um, for for all uh, this this sector. Uh, so let's go to another slide. Um, yeah, here is a 
some introduction. And let's talk about legal forms. Uh, let's go to the next. Yes, the legal forms of investment in Poland. So I try to say something about pros and cons of uh, starting uh, a business in Poland. Let's start with the forms, how to establish a company or a partnership. Uh, but I will ma mainly be speaking about company because uh, the ones that you see on the uh, picture a limited partnership, general partnership, partner company and limited partnership with shares are more adjusted to the needs of, uh, let's say, uh, natural persons that are conducting business while a uh, com company with limited liability, joint stock company and simple joint stock company are more corporate uh, entities. And, uh, the, most the most popular I think it's uh, a big chunk of, of the market is company with limited liability, so uh, Polish LLC uh, in Polish spółka z ograniczoną odpowiedzialnością. Uh, and the most uh, important pros of, of choosing such um, form of, of, of conducting business is that the required share, uh, share capital is only 5,000 PLN, so it's about 1,000 euro. Uh, and you can start your business activity right after you sign articles of association. Uh, what is very important that the shareholders are never personally liable for the debts of the company. So if a Finnish company starts, uh, let's say, as a mother company, as a parent company of Polish LLC, will never take uh, responsibility for its uh, debts. Um, yeah, it is also very important uh, that in Poland you can start um, a business as a branch office, so uh, a Finnish company can also create, let's say, for a start, uh, a branch office. Mm, it does not constitute a new entity, but uh, it allows um, a Finnish company to smoothly employ people in Poland and to have its own uh, accounting. Uh, let's go to the ne next slide. Yeah, let's see how the um, what is the process of establishing LLC in Poland. Uh, the first step is preparation of articles of association. You need to go to a notary. Um, the good information is maybe it's it's a con. Yeah? You need to go to Polish, uh, let's say, notary. But another uh, side of this middle is that you um, can uh, grant a POA for uh, a person in Poland, and this per person can go to the notary and represent you, uh, start the company, st set up a company on your own, on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Yes, then we have a uh, very important uh, obligation to uh, have uh, some uh, building, some per permises to start uh, our business. Yeah, we, we need to have a registered office, so it can be leased, it can be uh, bought, but it must be uh, indicated when we would like to register, register our company. Then we have to register the company. It must take place uh, in six months from uh, the signing of AOA. After the company is registered, you can uh, smoothly open a bank account and then register for VAT purposes. So, OK, let's go to another slide. And a few words about uh, employment. Um, there is a, in Poland, there is a well educated, as I mentioned, population with competitive labor costs, uh, which I will maybe I will tell more uh, in the next slide. But uh, what is very important is that we have a labor code in Poland and it is like um, the minimal standards uh, of uh, terms and conditions of employment for each employee. So we, uh, every employer needs to um, follow these minimal standards. In each case, he can grant better, better conditions, uh, more than it is um, uh, described in the, um, the in the labor code. So let's go to another slide and let's uh, see what are the most important basic rules of employment. Um, minimum wage uh, it changes every year. Uh, this year, uh, and I'm showing the, the real employer's cost. So this is also plus uh, social contribution, which is on the side of employer. It's uh, more than 300, 3,000, excuse me, 600 PLN, which is about 740 euro. 
So I think it's very competitive uh, in the market. I mean, the European market. A working time is eight hours per day, uh, average uh, five days in uh, in a week. Holiday leave is 20 or 26 days, uh, depending on period of employment. And I mean here period of overall employment. So uh, it's also very important uh, information that it's not like um, benefit from one uh, employer. Uh, and it's also very important that period of education is also counted of uh, as uh, period of employment. And sick leave uh, for the first 33 days uh, in a given calendar year, the employer has to finance 80% of sickness uh, allowance. But after this period, this sickness benefit is financed by Polish uh, Social Contribution Office. Uh, what is very important that in case of um, employees that have 50 years or more, it is only 14 days. So it is also su such incentive to, to give chance to uh, this group of uh, employees. So here my part uh, ends, so I will uh, gladly pass the floor to Nora. Yeah, so thank you very much. And and um, let's talk a little bit about taxation system in Poland and about recent changes. Um, please go to the next slide. Um, I would like to talk to you a little bit, uh, just very brief about the tax system at all that we have in Poland. It's um, I would say it's uh, quite a complicated system. Uh, in some OECD um, ranking, we were like mentioned, Poland was mentioned as a third country uh, having the most uh, difficult tax law. The tax law is um, is complicated at one hand and is changing changing quite fast. This is at the other hand. But uh, also what we need to say is that there are quite a lot of uh, different possibilities, tax reliefs and other how to conduct the business. And this is uh, very positive for investors. And the tax rates are not high, not so high if we compare it with other countries. The general tax rate for in the companies, uh, they pay corporate income tax and the general tax rate is 19%. For small entrepreneurs uh, and uh, entrepreneurs st starting their business activity, the tax rate is 9%. Uh, in regard to personal income tax, uh, we have different possibilities how to pay it. Uh, and we have uh, the general one is the progressive one, 17% and 32% uh, if the income is uh, higher than 120,000 uh, Polish currency. The Polish currency, um, we need to divide by four 0.5, actually right now maybe even 6 or 7 uh, to, to, to have euro amount, but, but uh, earlier it was like uh, 4.5. Uh, we have also linear taxation, this is 19%, and we have also various uh, forms of uh, flat rate taxation. So uh, then the tax rate is lower, like uh, 12, 15%, but uh, but you don't you cannot deduct any costs of it. If the income is uh, higher than 1 million slotted, then we have solidarity surcharge and it's of 4%. VAT is more or less quite similar and uh, harmonized uh, within European Union and all, also in Poland we have solutions that are um, across the Europe. Um, what we have, and I will talk uh, a little bit later about it, this is a very digital system and some other changes uh, that are uh, coming to make the system more digital than it is right now. The standard VAT rate is 23%. Uh, we have 8% for uh, some selected uh, products, uh, services like pharmaceuticals, medical products, uh, food, uh, restaurant and hotel services, um, newspapers, magazines and transport and housing. And we have 5%. This is the lower VAT rate. This is for unprocessed food and books. Uh, for Due to the 
COVID pandemic, um, the government decided and uh, and to reduce an inflation that we have in Poland, the uh, government decided to lower uh, VAT rates for food to zero percent. Um, and and uh, this is uh, starting from February to to you know, Ju July to end of July uh, 2022. Uh, also, for some other products, uh, the VAT rates were um, lowered, well uh, reduced. Uh, we have also a transfer tax. This is a taxation um, coming regarding some uh, some transactions that uh, that are under civil law, like a sale of immovable property or movable property um, of uh, rights, um, different articles of association, increasing of share hub, capital or loan agreement. They are covered with a transfer tax. Um, the condition is that the activity is not covered by VAT in such a case uh, and the rates are like 2%, 1% and 0.5%. There are also some exclusions of it. And of course, there are further taxes like inheritance and gift tax, local taxes, real estate, transportation tax, even dog tax, um, tax on financial institutions and excise tax. Please go to the next slide. Um, as Tomasz said, said, it's possible to uh, to make to uh, to to make a business in Poland using different forms of uh, associations, uh, partnerships, uh, etc. And uh, the most of them generally, the rule is that all uh, companies like uh, limited liability joint stock company and also. Uh, limited partnership um, since uh, 2021 and uh, general partnership are subject to corporate income tax. All companies' partnerships are subject to VAT and just a professional partnership, uh, it's transparent and is subject only to personal income tax. So it means that the company as such, the partnership as such, doesn't pay any tax uh, for uh, regarding the income that she generates, but the income should be paid by the uh, shareholders. Uh, please go to the next slide. Poland is a very uh, the taxation in Poland, but not only taxation. Actually, Poland is very digital uh, country. I would say uh, if we uh, compare it with other countries, there are a lots of uh, things that we can do uh, using an internet and just uh, staying at home. It refers to also to uh, different like medical uh, care and and um, some application that we may for instance for ID or something but also in taxation area this is a very very digital country uh, every month all companies that are uh, doing business in Poland um, needs to report VAT for this purpose they have a special um, uh, soft data standard audit file for tax, which is for VAT, and it's combination of two documents actually of a VAT declaration and of a VAT registers. In such a document, you need to imagine that in the second part, when we have um, uh, when we have the um, trans, uh, which is a VAT. Um, register. We have one by one all transactions that that were done by the company. They are mentioned then. Why? But one by one, and such a report we need to provide to the tax authority every month. We have also online cash registered. We have different possibilities how to invoice, etc. And everything is online, of course, and everything is digital. Starting from 2023, uh, we have uh, we will have new system. This is e invoicing system, national e-invoicing system. This is going to be a special platform that is provided by the Polish tax authority and it will uh, and it's for three. It has actually three purposes. First of all, invoicing. So all companies they 
need to uh, issue their invoices using the, this platform. It will be no possible that somebody can invoice, uh, issue an invoice in, all, in uh, their own system and send to the buyer, but obligatory all companies are going to use this new system. It means that we will have uh, real-time reporting because you need to issue an invoice using this system and the tax authority has this invoice immediately. Of course, the buyer has the invoice also so immediately. Further thing is that in the system all documents are going to be archived and also if you um, if somebody else should issue your company that is a Polish company then then you will receive also such input invoices also using this um, system. Um, this is um, such a digitalization of uh, Polish VAT system, first of all, has uh, three uh, approaches, actually. Mm, the tax authority wants to make um, digital and uh, automatic uh, tax reporting as much as possible. It helps uh, to the tax authority also to, uh, to um, check everything, to make ev eventual uh, tax audit, etc. Uh, also to protect the system and prevent of tax fraud and uh, to simplify the tax accounting. Please go to the next slide. Uh, this is um, in our. Um, this is a little bit about the standard audit file for tax. Um, this is a new solution, and we use it. And also, there are much more information. This is also important that at one hand uh, everything is digital, but at the other hand, the Polish tax authority requires much more information than usually are, uh, let's say, in VAT declaration in this case. So. Uh, and that are important for VAT purposes. We need to um, mark, for instance, um, in such a data, all transactions that are with affiliated companies within, within a group. Uh, also, we need to uh, mark there with GTU symbols. There are symbols for selected items, for selected goods, like, for instance, alcohol, but not only, also cars, parts of cars, uh, uh, coal and um, some wastes, etc. Uh, we need to mark them with dif different GTU symbols starting from uh, 0, 01 till 13. So the tax authority can check uh, what's uh, the subject of all transactions and uh, whether they are uh, correctly calculated. Uh, also, we have a proceeding, uh, procedure split payment. So for some transactions, uh, the buyer needs to pay a VAT amount to a special VAT conto and net amount to the special uh, to the just to the general uh, bank account of the seller. And such transactions, they need to be uh, marked in this data with uh, with uh, letters MPP. Uh, please go. Go to the next slide. Okay, uh, this is one thing. Uh, this is the standard audit file for, for tax for VAT purposes that we need to send each month to the tax authority, but also we have uh, seven other structures. There are also structures of standard audit file for tax. Uh, which we need to send to the tax authority when the tax authority makes a request, for instance, during the tax audit or tax checks. Um, and there are books of account, bank statement, warehouse, uh, VAT invoices, VAT invoices of flat rate farmers, revenue and expenses ledger and revenue records. Please go to the next slide. Uh, this is about uh, a new structure uh, that is going to be introduced in Poland. Um, these um, uh, e-invoices, we will have no further uh, invoices as we know them from today. Uh, like today, uh, we have we you can have invoices in paper form, just regular paper. You can have invoices in electronic format. that are sent, for instance, by email as PDF data. Uh, starting from 23 obligatory, it will be not possible because all invoices will be in structured form. There is a special form already published.
published by the Polish uh, Ministry of Finance uh, in XML format, and this is the only possibility that can be used in the next year. Starting from this year, it's possible to use it volu voluntarily. So, uh, so for it's already ready and it can be used for tech tests and for uh, to share how uh, to show how it's working the, the whole uh, the solution and the idea. And as I said, this national e-invoicing system is going to be used for issuing and sending structured invoices to the buyers. Also, the system will store invoices, will assign them a, a unique ID number, so each invoice will receive uh, one unique number and uh, will uh, also check whether the invoices are compliant with uh, relevant template. If not, they will be rejects, rejected and the taxpayer receives a notice that, that such an invoice is rejected due to the mistake and needs to, uh, to correct it and send it one more time. Because as long as the invoice is not sent by national e-invoicing system, the buyer will not receive it and such an invoice is not issued anymore. And uh, furthermore, the system will be used also to analyze and check the details uh, shown in the invoice and, mm, and also it will be used by the tax authority in case of different uh, tax audit checks, etc. The tax authority will have all information in one place and will be able to check it immediately. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, the purpose of, of this is uh, first uh, first of all, um, the, the tax authority uh, wants to make this whole system more effective and more simplified and also, of course, they want to control taxpayers easier. Uh, they want to uh, improve uh, corrected VAT invoicing and uh, not to have so many templates for it because uh, today it's actually that each company has own template and, and they use uh, such a template that comes from the, uh, from the company. And also they want to uh, monitor uh, turnover. Of course, uh, everything will be in real time and increase uh, revenue for the tax. Uh, there are also some advantages for taxpayers. Um, of course, it, if the whole system is implemented correctly and, and everybody in the company knows how to use it and, and how it should work, then, then it's going to simplify the whole uh, transactions and also the, um, the way of invoicing and will also, um, there will be no so many mistakes in invoicing due to the reason, because right now it can happen that somebody issues an invoice with wrong VAT number or something and such mistakes cannot happen in the future uh, if there is an invoicing system uh, that for instance you put uh, false um, numbers instead of two you put the number three then such an invoice will be rejected and and not so many corrections could be. Also, um, you, it will be uh, sure that uh, the partner uh, receives such an invoice, and um, and there will be there is no possibility to lose uh, or destroy such an invoice. So we will have no duplicates for such a case. Uh, please go to the next slide. Next slide. Uh, very shortly, uh, I would like to tell you also a little bit about tax reliefs that we have in Poland. Uh, first of all, there are a huge uh, of possi uh, some possibilities for investors uh, regarding investment projects in Polish investment zone, but at this point I'm not going to uh, tell you in details. This will my colleague Magdalena do. Uh, and um, what I would like to say you, this is um, some reliefs that the companies can use and it was introduced, uh, the most of them were introduced or changed uh, in, in this year. It was made by a whole, we had a quite a huge change in a law called Polish deal. And one of the points that this Polish deal um, has, there are uh, different reliefs. 
a co for instance, a consolidation relief. This is for companies that would like to buy shares in other company that is in a bad condition. So if some investor would like to buy shares just to, to um, improve the company that is existing but in a bad conditions, then they can deduct all expenses for purchase of such shares uh, from its income. If uh, then uh, we have a possibility relief for development and expansion, if uh, some company would like to go and find new markets when uh, when where the company can sell its own products, uh, then uh, all um, let's say events uh, participating in different congresses, marketing materials, uh, uh, such all marketing expenses uh, connected with it, then they they can be treated as tax deductible expenses. Uh, also, they can be deducted uh, for the, let's say, for the second time from the income, because first of all, such such um, deduction is possible just on general conditions, but then as a relief, it can be deducted. Uh, we have also prototype relief. Uh, this is for uh, cost production of uh, for cost of trial production of new products. Uh, this is the same uh, kind of relief: robotization cost for robotization, CSR relief, also for different corporate social recipients responsibility programs activities that the companies can do. Uh, or for uh, initial public offering, this is uh, if somebody uh, goes uh, to the stock uh, also, and business and research um, relief uh, and IP box. Uh, IP box is and for innovative employees. Uh, all this, um, if uh, if company makes uh, some uh, some researches or developments, uh, then can deduct. Uh, uh, its um, costs connected with it uh, from the uh, income. And uh, what's important that generally, uh, and IP box is for IT solutions, let's say, and there is also additional relief for innovative employees. If the employees are making some innovative projects, programs, then it can be used also. Uh, how the, the this um, this um, generally how these reliefs are working is following if the company makes expenses for this then it's tax deductible costs at one time but also later on all that cost can be deducted one more time from income so uh, it's worth to know about it and and it's worth to apply for it let's say to use it uh, more or less i would say because no uh, no application is necessary uh, for tax safety the safeness for the company, we always recommend uh, if the amounts are higher, we recommend to have a binding interpretation uh, to be safe in the future, um, that nothing can change, uh, neither in uh, interpretation of the regulations nor in um, and nor in, in um, administrative uh, court. Uh, jurisdiction so that's why we we recommend such a binding interpretation before such a relief is introduced please go to the next slide And this is the last change um, that is also important and very shortly about it, incorporate income tax uh, starting from the next year. Also, we will be, uh, it will be necessary to um, record uh, business transactions in a special electronic format and it will see more or less, uh, it will be in a logical structure uh, that sees more or less like a standard audit file for tax that we have today for VAT purposes. So, it needs to be implemented also very carefully just to be useful for the company. But if it's implemented in a good way, then the preparation of yearly corporate income tax declaration will be easier. And this is everything from my side. Thank you very much. And uh, the floor is yours, Nora. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, and now, last but not least, we have my colleague Magdalena Skorowska. Magdalena is rural and partner new investment expert, and as such, she's providing support to foreign investors planning 
new projects in Poland, including choosing a suitable location and advising them on available sources of state aid. Today, Magdalena will talk about state aid instruments, for example, Polish investment zone, uh, and government grants, mm -hmm. EU grants, support for eco projects, and also about regional aid map. Magdalena, uh, floor Good is yours. morning. Thank you very much for the introduction. We can move to the next slide. I am very happy to be here with you. As Nora said, I work with investors who plan special projects in Poland, uh, mostly new investments. Uh, so we will talk about one of the competitive benefits, I think, of Poland, which is um, the available state aid, available uh, public support uh, for, for projects. Um, okay. Can we go to the next, next slide? Okay. So, uh, since Poland joined the EU, one of the main um, sources of state aid are the European structural funds available for, available for Poland. Uh, those, also, those are big amounts of, um, of, of money, big budgets. Uh, right now we are in a transition period where the uh, old budget has practically ended and the new budget is still not made operational for Poland. Uh, so the uh, the current budget uh, for Poland for the years 2021 and 2027 is approximately 76 billion euros. So uh, um, the start uh, of uh, the new uh, budget um, operational start is expected is expected in the second half uh, of this year. Um, uh, we are still waiting uh, for uh, at the moment for um, the main cooperation agreement be between Poland and the e European Commission to be signed. So many different um, important agreements and programs um, are at the moment being negotiated and signed. Um, the funds uh, are uh, also made available, uh, quite a big share of the funds are made available for companies uh, in Poland and um, there will be nationwide, nationwide and regional calls for applications. Uh, the regional ones are mostly for small and medium enterprises and the nationwide are for all. Uh, so we are really waiting for that, uh, but uh, there are many also incentives uh, and funding available for the from the Polish domestic budget, such as the Polish investment zone, which is an income tax exemption tool. I will talk about this a little bit later also about the governmental grant, which is a cash subsidy, a very attractive one, uh, of course, for just some some investments, not all will will apply, will be able to apply. Uh, and there are also other domestic grants and tax reliefs available uh, and from time to time also international aid programs um, uh, on the European level. Um, for example, also the Nor Norwegian financial mechanism. OK, we can go to the next slide. OK, so once again, uh, here are the main forms of public support, uh, financial support. Uh, uh, um, the most attractive ones are grants, which are which is non returnable cash subsidy. Um, uh, so once again, EU funds uh, part will part will be assigned to companies to support growth, innovation, in ecological in uh, solutions. And in this um, budget, newest budget, uh, the stress will be put on R&D projects. So not uh, all investments will be able to to uh, to benefit from that. Uh, also a government grant, so so not from the EU funds uh, for the most important investments for the Polish government, I would say, uh, such as uh, large investments in the production sector with high capital expenditures uh, or for uh, investments in innovative ser services. Uh, another form of uh, public supports are uh, different tax incentives, uh, such as the income tax exemption uh, for new investments within special economic zone, 
um, Polish Investment Zone, uh, property tax exemption available in some municipalities, so not in whole Poland, um, and numerous different tax reliefs, as uh, Kasia uh, described, for implementing innovation, uh, technology transfer, robotization of production, hiring uh, persons, and so on. Uh, and uh, another form of public supports are different loans uh, on preferential basis, um, where the interest rate is significantly uh, lower than the market one. And it is possible uh, to, um, to apply for a partial forgiveness uh, of such a loan where part of it doesn't have to be paid back. Yes, and this can be uh, financed uh, either from national funds uh, for, um, or from EU ones. From national funds, there is this quite attractive tool for um, ecological investments, for example. We can go to the next slide. Okay. And uh, this is something interesting, um, is the regional aid um, uh, uh, intensity in Poland. Uh, so we, as we see, this is uh, the Polish uh, map uh, where um, in general uh, regional aid is available for new investments. Um, uh, new investments or initial investment is, is what you have a definition you have on the right side. So it means uh, it can be available for companies which set up a new establishment, a new company in Poland, um, or they extend uh, the production capacity of an existing uh, company already in Poland, um, or they plan a fundamental, so really uh, important change of the, um, of the overall production process. Um, they plan to diversify um, the production by implementing completely new products which, they, which have not been produced um, uh, in this company, uh, or also an acquisition of assets of a company that, uh, that, um, that has already closed or would have been closed had it not been purchased. Um, so if you look at the map, uh, uh, apart from Warsaw and its surroundings, um, uh, each region uh, can benefit from this regional aid. Uh, Eastern and Central Poland as underdeveloped in, uh, in, co uh, in, if you, if you, in comparison to other parts, uh, as you see, has a higher percentage of, of possible aid. Of, co of course, this is the maximum level uh, for large companies. If you're a small one or medium one, then um, it can be even increased by 10 or 20 percent for small companies. Um, so, um, so Warsaw does not benefit about, but whole Eastern and, and uh, uh, Central Poland is up to 50 percent. Um, then Central one and parts of uh, Northwest uh, it's up to 40 percent. Um, and uh, Dolnośląskie and Wielkopolskie uh, developed po uh, regions in Poland uh, with the capital cities of Wrocław and Poznań. Uh, um, the aid intensity is, is of course lower there. Um, in Poznań and Wrocław it's 20% and decreasing to 15% starting 2025. Uh, the rest of these uh, voivodeships of these regions uh, can benefit up to 25%. Um, and uh, Pomorskie, which is by the Baltic Sea, um, Gdańsk region, um, as well as Śląskie uh, with the Katowice um, region is uh, until 30%, which you can count on. Okay, we can we can go to the next slide. OK, so what is also uh, important um, is that such aid is on the one hand is available. On the other hand, you have to stick to certain important rules uh, which you have to remember about. Uh, it means one of them is uh, that the aid has to have the incentive effect. It means it has to uh, it should encourage to invest. And in practice, it means that you have to place prepare an application for state aid and place it at uh, the proper institution uh, before you start the investment. Yes, And so um, start of investment, start of works means either start of construction works on the site 
or a first legally binding commitment to, to order equipment. So signing agreements, mainly making payments, uh, this is not allowed until you prepare and uh, file the, um, the application. Uh, also, uh, the regional aid is not uh, possible to, to receive for relocation projects, so you cannot transfer the same, same or similar activity or, or part of it from one country to another within the European economic area and expect that you can receive uh, aid for this. Uh, this is uh, this is not uh, not uh, available. OK, uh, let's go next. OK, uh, and this is about, um, uh, let's speak a shortly about the Polish investment zone. So uh, it is um, possible to invest, uh, possibly uh, possible to invest in the whole, Polish, uh, whole Poland. And uh, if you fulfill uh, certain criteria, uh, qualitative, quantitative, uh, then you, you may uh, receive a um, decision on income tax relief. Um, for for new investment, uh, and it is available for most sectors, um, economy sectors uh, in Poland. Um, it's not designed, for example, for for sales uh, for the sales sector. Okay, um, and the level uh, of such tax relief uh, is calculated based on the regional aid uh, intensity. We we showed you um, uh, two slides ago, uh, and either um, the higher up. Uh, the incurred uh, investment costs or two years employment costs connected to, with the creation of new workplaces. Um, so a general rule is uh, if you are a small uh, enterprise, uh, the smaller you are, the smaller um, uh, investment in expenditures you have to bear. And if you are a large um, uh, company, then ex the expenditures, um, the minimal ones are, are higher. So they can vary from 2 million euros to, two, uh, to 20 million euros. You, you have to uh, invest in order to... Uh, to apply for this um, uh, for this income tax relief, uh, yes. So the um, uh, so not only the company status is important here, but also uh, the local unemployment rate. So preferred are underdeveloped municipalities and counties. Uh, so if you uh, plan to invest. Um, um, in a very developed area, then you have to really invest a lot of money. And if you're going to, to a rural uh, underdeveloped area, then uh, the, the investments uh, you have to make are lower. And of course, there is a different qualitative criteria you have to meet to abstain as such a support permit, but we don't have time to uh, to cover that. Uh, and the uh, granted tax relief uh, is for 10, 12 or 15 years, depending on where you uh, invest. OK, we can go to the next slide. OK. Um, and, and now a few words about a different uh, source of aid. Uh, it's a cash grant for the uh, from the government, uh, which you negotiate individually. Uh, of course, it is um, designed for uh, investments of major importance to the to to Poland. So it's not for for every company and uh, every type of investment, and it's granted um, uh, either as an investment grant or an employment grant. Uh, so. Um, uh, it means uh, if you are uh, if you have one if your application has uh, has one uh, and uh, you have been chosen to receive this grant an um, uh, investor is, um, uh, is, is will sign an agreement uh, with the minister responsible for the uh, economic affairs um, and the investment grant um, the level of it which can be expected is at the highest of um, uh, between 10 and 20 percent of the qualified investment costs and reduced by, by some coefficient. Uh, so what are the minimum requirements? Uh, the most uh, important ones, of course, are any other qualitative criteria you have to meet. Uh, so uh, this investment grants, um, these investment grants are for uh, the production sector, uh, strategic, innovative uh, investments, um, uh, the more um, okay, so it's uh, for this uh, strategic invest a strategic um, investment means an investment above thirty. Um, 
32.5 million euros. Uh, an innovative one, uh, you can invest uh, a lot less to be able to apply. Uh, and on the right side, you see uh, how many new workplaces uh, should be created. Uh, the other uh, type of investment is R&D center where the expenditures are much lower uh, expected and the employment as well. So we can go to the next uh, slide. OK, the other type of uh, grant is the employment grant here, also from, from the Polish government, uh, based on the numbers of uh, workplaces uh, which are created. Um, and the grant is based on um, 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 on the right side, you see uh, the, the possible levels uh, you can apply for the maximum ones, of course. Uh, it's up to from 3,000 to 4,000 euros per, for one workplace. Um, it's also not, in, in, in general, this employment grant is available for uh, only for the services sector. Uh, so, uh, um, um, the higher, the, the more uh, for higher developed services, uh, the grant is uh, made available also higher. So yes, so uh, center of excellence, for example, um, where um, highly educated people, uh, people with higher education are um, employed, um, and then also the minimum costs uh, you have to you bury are are uh, lower, and the and the number of people you have to um, uh, hire is also lower than uh, in, in comparison with the business services sector, which are not highly developed um, services. Okay. Mm. Also, it's possible to apply for a training grant uh, from 25 to 50 uh, percent um, of incurred training costs. OK, we can go uh, further and now we switch uh, to EU projects uh, which are not yet uh, made operational, as I said, but they are planned uh, in the nearest future. So the biggest and uh, most important uh, maybe uh, program uh, financing um, investments for company is, our, uh, is the European Funds for Innovative Economy. That's the name of the program. Uh, and R&D projects are the main uh, support area. So you, you may not uh, apply for uh, grants in, in any sector, any kind of projects, but it has to be connected with some kind of uh, R&D activities of companies. Um, R&D works are, um, are not assigned to one sector. They can be made in different sectors, including the IT one. And um, the R&D works should lead to either the creation of new products and services to be implemented in the company, development of new technologies, process improvement, prototype development and testing, um, development of innovative solutions, um, and here's uh, the maximum level of support uh, based on the previous programs. Um, this is really the maximum one for small and medium enterprises. For, for uh, large enterprises, this um, amount, uh, this level of support is a little bit lower. And it's um, even up to 75% for industrial research and 50% uh, of these costs, uh, which qualify, of course, for ex uh, experimental development. Mm, and it's also possible to apply, will be possible to apply for R&D infra infrastructure. Uh, so, so necessary investments cost to conduct these works up to uh, 50%. Uh, let's go further. So not only for R&D works will the grants be available, all, but also for such works which are connected with these R&D projects. Um, they will be financed as well. So uh, either the implementation of the innovation, so the next step after the R&D works are finished, uh, so prepar uh, preparatory costs to, to start production, for example, of the new products, um, uh, trainings um, for uh, employees and the management, eco design, uh, digitalization of production and processes, uh, cybersecurity, and going abroad to, to new markets, so uh, internationalization, interna going international costs. Okay, we can, we can, we can go next. 
and very shortly uh, for small and medium enterprises. Um, so in general, the um, uh, eastern part of Poland is uh, underdeveloped in, in, in comparison with the western one. So there's a completely separate big program uh, financing uh, also uh, companies um, um, uh, development plans uh, in this in this area. Uh, so for certain uh, voivod ships, as you see on the map, um, and so this will be uh, designed uh, especially to uh, finance development on the early stage of uh, of companies. Uh, so you will be receiving uh, some financing for consulting companies, ecological uh, ecological solutions, automation and robot robotization. And the last slide is about. Uh, 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 please go. Okay. Uh, um, very important sector uh, for the EU uh, and for Poland as well um, is the financing um, of uh, projects connected with ecology. Uh, to adapt to the European Green Deal, uh, among others, uh, in order to increase uh, the, sh uh, the share in Poland of renewable energy. So uh, grants, uh, EU ones and Polish ones, uh, uh, and, and also loans, which are already available on preferential basis, uh, will, be, uh, will be there. And typical types of projects uh, um, for funding will be an renewable energy, installations, energy efficiency measures, um, cogeneration, heating, cooling systems, resource efficiency, waste management, and energy infrastructure. Thank you. That's all from me for today.